In this video, I'm going to use this equation, b equals i times r, which we're familiar with, to do two examples which teach us how to deal with non-standard units. So when the current isn't in amps, the resistance isn't in ohms, and maybe the voltage isn't in volts. These are going to be using prefixes. So this is a pro um, quite straightforward examples because the issue here is how to use a calculator and how to actually deal with the prefixes, not how to use the equation. So here's my first example. I'm going to put the current as 5, and instead of amps, I'm going to put the current to be milliamps, and we need to understand what that means. And the resistance is going to be 12, but instead of ohms, it's going to be kilo ohms. And our question is, what is the voltage in this case? Now, this is quite a nice example because our equation is already in the correct form. We already have V equals I times R. So all we need to do is multiply our numbers together. So let's have a go. So V equals, now the I is 5 milliamps. Now we should know that milli, if we look at it, milli means divide by 1,000. Okay? Or milli means times 10 to the minus 3. That's what it actually means. That's As a prefix, it's what it has a meaning of. So our, our problem becomes 5 milliamps, 5 divided by 1,000 times 5 resistance, which is 12 kilo ohms. So it's times 12, and then we should know that K kilo means times 1,000, or it means times 10 to the 3. That's what kilo means. These are our prefixes, which is why we use them. So back to our problem. So it's times 1,000. So what does that come out to be? Well, let's have a look. Here's our calculator. So we do 5 divided by 1,000, too many, equals times by 12 times 1,000 equals, and the answer comes out to be 60 volts. So there we have successfully used our numbers with prefixes to get the correct answer. But that's not the only way we can do it. We can use standard form as well. We can do V equals 5, and this time the milli is going to be 10 to the minus 3. So it's 5 times 10 to the minus 3, times by 12. But the kilo ohms this time is going to be times 10 to the 3, times 10 to the 3. And we hope that we should get the same answer. So remember, we had 60 last time. Let's see what we get this time. So we'll clear it. And we do 5, and it's this button here, times 10 to the minus 3, okay, multiplied by 12 times 10 to the 3 equals, and there's our answer, 60 volts, which is fantastic. So whether we use just simply dividing and multiplying, or whether we use standard form, we end up with the same example, uh, same answer. Let's do example number 2. In this case we've got V equals 6 volts, and we've got the resistance is 24 kilo ohms. And the question is, what is the current? And this looks much simpler because our voltage is already in standard units. It doesn't, hasn't got any prefixes. But it's slightly complicated by the fact we need to rearrange the equation, but I'm sure we can do that. So we end up with I equals V divided by R. So let's just go ahead and do this. So therefore, our first example, I equals, right, the V is 6 volts, so no prefixes to put in place there, divided by 24,000, and that comes out to be, well, let's have a look. So 6 divided by 24,000 equals, so it's 1 over 4,000, or converting it to numbers, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And that's maybe not as convenient as we want it to be. Do we actually know what that means? Well, first of all, we need to give it a unit. So it's 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. Let's see if standard form gives us any other clues. So here, I equals 6 divided by, now the resistance is 24K, so it's 24, okay, and then it's times 10 to the 3, which equals, so let's do that on our calculator, so it's 6 divided by 24 
times 10 to the 3. Note I didn't need brackets or anything because using this times 10 to the button, the exponent button, treats all of this as one number. So always do it this way. And we get 1 over 4,000, we get exactly the same, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. Now, is this as convenient as it can be? Well, not really. So what we can do is remember that to convert from um, amps into milliamps, we just need to multiply by a thousand, because a milliamp is a thousand times bigger than an amp. So if I take my answer, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4, and multiply it by a thousand, I get the answer of 0.25, but now it's not amps, it's milliamps. So that equals 0.25 milliamps, which is an easier answer to speak about. You can say 2.5, 0.25 milliamps. How else could I do that? Well, if I get back to my original um, answer, so I'll just do this sum again, 6 divided by 24 times 10, ooh, done that wrong, 6 divided by 24 times 10 to the 3 equals 6 divided by 24 times 10 to the 3 equals, so that's where I was to start with, I can actually use this very clever button here, the engineering button, but I want to go the other way, so I do shift engineering, and now it's already put it as 10 to the minus 3, 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3. And look, 10 to the minus 3 is milliamps. So I can write it down directly as 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, amps, or I've run out of paper, that was silly, which is 0 0.25 milliamps. there we go. So that allows us to use our standard form fluently to express our units and our answers to our calculations in the most convenient and most appropriate way.